If you are looking for a research fellowship abroad, then you have clicked the right video. Hi, hello, my name is Atya. Welcome to PhDpreneur. I make videos about PhD, the latest opportunities in research as well as entrance exams. I also make content around wellness, vipassana and mindset. In today's video, I'm going to give you complete details about a research fellowship which is called as Commonwealth Split Site PhD Fellowship. So it's a 12 months research fellowship in the UK that you have to do. The duration is 12 months. The deadline for this is 5th of December 2023. So you really need to hurry up if you are thinking of applying for this. In the subsequent sections, I'm going to discuss about eligibility, the stipend that is offered, what are the documents that you require for application, also how to apply and by when you can expect the results. If you apply for this now. Commonwealth split side PhD fellowships are for students from low and middle income countries. Moving on to the stipend. So your entire airfare gets covered from your home country to UK as well as back. Apart from that, your tuition fees go covered. So you don't have to pay any tuition fees whatsoever for this fellowship. Apart from that, you are going to get a stipend of this much if you are living in UK and specifically if you are living in metropolitan city is, then you will get an increased stipend of this much amount. Apart from that, warm clothing allowance, like when you are moving to a new country which has a cold temperature, then certain amount is given so that you get accustomed to the new temperature over there because the temperatures are very less. Warm clothing allowance is also given in this case. Not just this, if you are a single parent, you have a child, you are a widow or a divorcee, whichever case, then your first First child gets an allowance of this much amount and second and third child if you have they will get an allowance of this much amount. This fellowship is completely and fully funded with respect to all the expenses which are being covered in this. Moving on to eligibility. The first criteria is citizenship proof. Why? Because as I've said earlier this fellowship is particularly for those from low and middle income countries. Which are those countries that I will tell in a while but for now citizenship proof is one thing that you need at any cost. Number two, all transcripts related to your qualification. From your high school to whatever qualification you have had till now, all the details of that are required. The third thing that you need is reference letters. So reference letters, you need minimum two, maximum it can go up to three. You need it in a PDF format and signed and sealed on an institutional letterhead. I'm going to flash certain points on screen in some time that the referee has to mention about you. Let's move on to the screen. How long and in what capacity the referee has known the applicant? The referee's view on the applicant's suitability for the proposed scholarship and the need for particular subject of study in UK. Information on how and to what extent the application has shown ability in terms of capability to grasp concepts and reason analytically. Capacity for original thought and motivation and perseverance in achieving objectives. Assessment of applicants' particular strengths and weaknesses, the applicant's potential to impact development in their home country, and any general qualities which the referee considers would make the applicant a good recipient of a scholarship. Apart from this, if you have any publications or prizes, awards and accolades, then you can list maximum up to 10 of these. If you have some work experience, then you have an added advantage in the sense that you can enlist how your work experience is relevant to this particular scholarship. If it is not relevant, then you can say about the lessons that you have learned while employment that you can use for this fellowship. You need not have an academic job or a research job to apply for this. You just make sure that you put it in the purpose of statement that how you have been fitted from this particular thing. There is one more section that you need to fill and it's called as the development impact statement. What is it? Here are four parts to the development impact statement. It's a document which you have to write and what all you have to write, let's move on to the screen. In the first part, you will explain how this particular scholarship will help you with development issues at global, national and local level and also the development issues connected to the chosen CSE development 
theme and the wider sector. In the second part, you will write about how you intend to apply to new skills once the scholarship ends. In the third part, you are going to outline about what can be expected from you in development terms, including the outcomes and the aims. Basically, what it means is what are you going to do after this particular scholarship? How are you going to use it? The fourth part has how the impact of their work could be best measured and evidenced. These are the things that come in development impact statement. This has to be written quite carefully and if you need any help, help with this do let me know in the comments i can make a video on that before this video i had done two videos on commonwealth scholarships one is commonwealth master scholarships and one is commonwealth phd fellowships now masters fellowship you know it's for masters the phd fellowship video that i had done earlier was for full phd the information that i'm going to give in today's video it's not for entire phd but it's like you can say a research internship so if you have enrolled for your PhD and you need an exposure abroad or you want some kind of leads with respect to your work, then this is the perfect fellowship for you. What are the different eligibility conditions that you need to be considering before application for this? First, as I mentioned, citizenship proof. This is a non-negotiable. The second one is you need to be registered in a university in UK for availing this fellowship. This is only for those who have registered for a PhD. You should be available for starting your study in September 2024. Mind you, the applications are starting now but your course is going to start on September 2024 so you can just imagine if you are planning for an abroad study you really need to put an effort and do your homework well in advance as much as one one and a half year before so that you get into the desired scholarship of your choice apart from these conditions you need to be having your postgraduate master's degree obviously for a PhD and secondly you should not be able to afford fees this is for those students from low income countries your income proofs and your financial status will be asked during the application process we have discussed all these things now now how do you apply whenever i make a video about study abroad scholarships the first question i get is how do i choose the university say suppose you want to apply for this you definitely have to register for phd before that now how do you apply for university how do you get a proper mentor the only answer for this is research research and research you need to be asking several people whoever has gone abroad it doesn't matter whether they are your relatives your friends anybody just make sure you take an opinion secondly there are so many online resources like quora is there linkedin is there you can actually ask people the doubts wherever you feel that you don't have information thirdly i have done a detailed video on step-by-step -step guide on finding the right fellowship. It will take you from 0 to 100 with respect to any scholarship that you want to apply abroad. Do check out that. There is no fixed answer to this question. You just have to get as many data points as possible from all the different directions possible. There are no two ways about it. There is no hard and fast rule that this is working, that is working. What works for you may have not worked for anybody else. But to come to a particular conclusion, you will need a lot of information for you to process and come to a certain point that okay this will be my supervisor this will be the university that is the only way to go about it there is no other way the application for this is completely online this is the website where you will be applying for this the link is in the description you can have a look how the selection will happen the first criteria is your academic qualifications what all your achievements so far that would be the first thing the second thing is your research proposal. Obviously, when you are doing research, whether be it PhD or an internship like this, you are always going to be asked about what work are you going to do over there. It need not be the final thing, but a rough idea of what all things you are interested. If this thing is there, then based on that, your evaluation would be done. The third thing is your development impact statement. See, this fellowship is 
not like a regular corporate fellowship or like an educational fellowship it's more in the field of leadership social cause the intent of giving you also this fellowship is you go to uk get skills and use it for the development in your own country that is the main purpose and how you have written your development impact statement that will decide everything about that apart from these three criteria you are definitely going to hear from them by july 2024 if i'm not wrong if you have any further doubts which you will have after this video or any other scholarship video then i want you to go through two resources one is faq section where whatever doubt you may have somebody has already asked it in the faq section and the second is a document called advice for applicants so before filling the form make sure that you go through both these documents so that your application gets submitted successfully not just that you get selected also for this till the next time bye